Hi, I'm Gary with LawnAeration.com. I uh, just wanted to let you guys take a look at this and uh, maybe ride along with me a little bit. I uh, wanted to show you, um, I do a lot of these complexes uh, that are multi-units. This complex I'm on today, um, it probably has, I would guesstimate maybe, um, I don't know, 500 units in this complex. Uh, it's a apartment slash condo complex uh, and it's kept up pretty well. Um, there is some wide open areas you can see out by the pond. Uh, there's some wide open areas, but the vast majority of this complex is actually tight locations like this. Uh, and you'll see these tight spots generally um, are best suited for a walk behind, and you will have to use a walk behind to get in a lot of them because um, your curb areas and things. Uh, sometimes I run a small crew, um, and today, for instance, I'm here by myself. Uh, I'm going to aerate this whole complex. I'm about three fourths of the way finished with it already. Uh, and I'm going to do this whole complex myself today. Uh, yes, I've used the walk behind for several hours uh, to do some of the areas you cannot get in. Uh, but today I wanted to show you a little bit about uh, how I'm going to use and utilize a riding machine even to do these small areas. Most of the time people think a riding machine is only going to be useful uh, when you get to areas like these open areas and the ponds and things like that. But really they're not. If you're a good operator, you can get uh, a machine like this Xmark uh, in tight spaces like this. We have a Orion uh, stand-on aerator. We have a Z-plugger that is catered a little bit more towards wide open areas. Uh, but definitely the Ryan, um, the ZTR or the ZTS Ryan machine and the Xmark stand-on aerator, you can utilize those in tight spaces like this. Um, and you do want to watch your tracking of uh, mud and such on sidewalks. Um, you'll have to watch because you can't navigate and jump the curbs very well. Uh, but you can utilize that in these areas. Sometimes when you get in very small corners, uh, it's actually easier to use the ride-on machine than the walking machine. Because with the walking machine, if you're limited to like a five-foot swath, it's really hard to drop the tines, get going, and then raise the tines in about a, you know, four or five feet. It's really tough. What you find yourself doing with the walk behind machine is dropping the tines, walking up, raising the tines, backing up, dropping the tines, walking forward. Um, and by the time you get going, you don't get very good penetration uh, because it takes momentum and you have to force the tines down in the ground. So I figured uh, I'd let you just take a look at how I operate the, uh, at the X mark, even in these small areas. It allows me to do large complexes with a very small crew, uh, so I don't have to spend hours and hours. And it's not just the time issue. Uh, in a small area, the walk behind is going to be almost as, as time efficient as a riding machine. Um, so it's not really about an efficiency standpoint. Uh, but when you have to aerate in a day, and you're going to aerate for six or eight, or uh, some days I'll aerate for uh, eight or ten hours straight. Um, you know, running a walk behind for eight or ten hours straight uh, definitely wears you out. Uh, and that's where you have productivity loss, where you can run a machine like this, you know, for six or eight or ten hours, and you'll get fatigued, but it's not going to affect your speed of operation. Uh, so come with me. We're going to take a quick ride, and I'm going to show you uh, how I do some of these areas in the tight spots.
receive us.